Oh, because, you know, if I go back to you, Mark, the, the, at the end of the day, to build the real companies, and we see more and more entrepreneurs today. You know, I think in Israel, you will see in the next 12 months about 10 to 13 IPOs. It is very difficult to do this kind of companies with just small syndications. How do you overcome this uh, uh, problem that at the end of the day, there are more and more entrepreneurs that want to build large companies? Around, I totally agree that it's all about scale. And for me, what's interesting is that the syndicate feature will democratize or bring transparency to what syndicates are all about. At Maslow, we just did three investments between one and five million euro that are all hands-on syndicated deals. Um, and we started to talk about scale there. It's only three to five million euro rounds, but I'm very confident we can scale that by a factor of 10. So absolutely, you need capital. Absolutely, experimentation is cheap. Scale is very expensive. And you will fail if you don't have you know, strategic and then follow-on capability. But the, the idea of syndication, which is basically SPV, single company funds. Uh, and what I'm seeing is that a lot of my VC colleague actually have side funds, side pocket. Um, and in order to manage their fees and their carry, they do create SPV. They are basically single company funds. And I see that basically going mainstream. Except that in the past, nobody was talking about it. And now it's in the limelight. Do we have an opinion in the uh, crowd here about what is the best way to scale? Is it syndication? Is it crowdfunding? Or is it the good old VC? No opinion, so we will continue. Profit's a good idea. Yeah, Katya. The mic. Thank you. Just to add the uh, five cents. Um, somehow, um, this notion of the growth and uh, growth with a lot of strategic investments doesn't always work. So um, we now experiment with this organic growth idea back in Moscow. And uh, we believe that in the early stage, it's important to get the traction from the company without extra financing. And then, you know, when the company needs to go to the second stage, yes, this is when strategic advisor and strategic investor is important. But if we talk about early stage again, this is where government should play a role or crowdfunding or different vehicles that exist. Because uh, if the company gets a lot of finance in early stage, it's a lot of chance that the founders are going to get lazy. They need to stay hungry, as everybody says. So I don't know if it's, it doesn't sound too controversial, but we just found it like a working model as of today. Just, okay. just to I, I want to take this point and, take, uh, and go to a different model, which is not far away, which was extremely popular, still very popular that we see, is the accelerators. Now, we see, I would say, two major type of accelerators. Number one is accelerators that of pure financials. People that are arranging a group of investors or some uh, uh, VCs even in the US, I've seen quite a few VCs putting around uh, uh, accelerators, giving $60,000, $100,000 to, to guys to start. So this is one type. And the other type that we see is the accelerators, strategic ones, like the one Microsoft is doing with extreme success, but they're not looking into the equity side of it, but they're really looking to boost uh, um, innovation. Now, Joy, maybe I'll start with you. What do you think about the models, the different models? And do you have a favorite or you say no to both? We actually are investors in tech stars as a firm. So I would say that we like the accelerator model. Um, Techstars does take equity in its companies, so they have some skin in the game as they're developing the companies, which I think is not a bad model. I think some of, of those, the accelerators, can be quite draconian in terms of what they take in equity and that kind of thing, which you know we don't look at favorably. But there are a couple of wonderful accelerators that operate and I'm emphasizing New York City because we are now the number two place in the world for investment and tech development and all that stuff. Um, so, and that's where I'm from, but and they ex obviously exist elsewhere. So Dream It, Techstars, those kind of accelerators are very high quality. They provide a ton of value um, and they attract incredible mentorship from around the tech community 
for the startups that are involved in them. And they do that for a relatively reasonable slice of equity. It gives them skin in the game, and I don't think that's a bad model. Mark, you're nodding. Yeah. You're uh, uh, <laughs> so years ago, we built an accelerator inside the Reuters company. What we observed was an adverse selection criteria. It's basically we had all the schmucks projects coming to us. As an entrepreneur, I think you have to be out of your mind to give equity to an accelerator. It's wonderful to get real estate and services and, and money, but why on earth would I give equity when I know that later on I'm going to need a lot of money? And so if I was starting a company, I would never give one share to an accelerator because it's the life of blood of a project. But what one can do with $60,000? You borrow that money from your friends, your cousin, and basically you get on the phone and you annoy all your relationship until they give you that money. It's much more efficient. Ruby, are you going to give an advice to an entrepreneur who comes to PwC and wants to start a company to go to an accelerator to start? Well, usually no one hears my advices, but uh, I can try. So uh, an accelerator at, the, at its purest model is not a financing option. It's really a mentorship option. Uh, and I think that it's a great stepping stone towards getting that financing. So you can go to, a, to an accelerator, you can meet people, you can uh, work in a, in a working environment, uh, you can get introduced to money, to angels, to other funds, to VCs, but it's really just a stepping stone uh, in your path towards financing. I wouldn't look at it as pure financing. Like you said, what can you really do with $60,000? And I think that the accelerators came up with, uh, we're, go we're also going to give you some money because of Mar what Mark said, which was, uh, I'm not going to give you any of my shares just for your advice. I can get that probably with my friends and colleagues and whatever. Uh, so put some skin in the game so I can give you some shares. Well, would you give any money, b money without any shares? So, can you hear me? Okay, so the way I view accelerators, I think the good thing and the bad things that accelerators do is that they make it really easy to start a company. And the side effect of that obviously is that you see a lot of companies that are not worthwhile and start, off, start away instead of joining other good companies that could have been started and well fi financed and so forth. Uh, I think that there are very few accelerators today that really add value, to be honest. And I think most of them really become market, marketing platforms and focus on the preparing entrepreneurs to the demo day to meet investors, sort of a really reality show that, uh, that really doesn't, doesn't create a lot of value for those, uh, for those entrepreneurs. And to be honest, I don't know what will become of that in the next three to five years. I think you can, with Angelist and so forth, you can get now a lot of money and a lot of mentorship through in other ways. And... Uh, as, as was said before, I think the economical terms that go with accelerators are often not justifiable. And so I don't know if that's a really sustainable model. I want to go to Gilad and then I'll go back to you with a question here. Gilad, would you invest in an accelerator or you prefer not to? Well, I, I will invest in a company in an accelerator. <laughs> I'm not sure if I will invest in an accelerator itself. But uh, again, part of our uh, bigger group, we do have an accelerator in Israel for uh, CNIL tech technologies. And what do you expect from this accelerator? Uh, I think is to uh, bring the companies to the next stage, actually to give them uh, the expertise in order to actually leap to their next uh, stage, mostly. Now, Joy, one of the issues that people are, that are, they went to an accelerator, they got money from accelerator, and I hear it from a lot of entrepreneurs, they say, well, if the people that are involved in the accelerators, are not investing in us later, we are dead. What do you tell them? I don't think that that's necessarily true. First of all, well, my experience really is limited to some of the leading accelerators in New York City, which are extremely careful about the comp. They do a very, it's very, you know, it's like getting into Harvard, getting into Techstar. I mean, it's really, they have the best, you know, it, it's, there's the opposite of adverse selection. I think with a couple of, I, I agree that it's true with some of them, but with the real prestige accelerators, there's a wonderful vetting process that goes on and you get really leading companies involved. And it's, it's a, that itself is a great signal to all investors. The fact that you are a Techstars company is a fantastic signal, and that's their brand. And they have a lot to lose in choosing the wrong companies because once they start doing that, they're out of business. So they are very careful. 
the mentors come from all over the place. I mean, there are mentors from strategics, there are mentors from VCs, there are mentors you know, from industry, there are all kinds of mentors involved. So I don't think there's a tremendous amount of negative sig signaling. That said, you look at a Techstars company that doesn't get five term sheets within a day of the Techstars demo day, you are a little worried about them. They're still asking for money you know, a month later. You're a little worried. Most Techstars companies honestly get a couple of term sheets right away. I mean, we are investors in Techstars because we want early access. We want to see the companies before demo day, frankly. Katya, have you tried that in your uh, area, uh, the accelerators? Well, um, I just had the same exact metaphor. So good accelerators like get into a really good school. And it's, you pay a lot, but then you get access to the great network. And, uh, and we just spent a couple of, um, couple of weeks, um, a month ago, in Silicon Valley, and we worked together with Y Combinator and 500 startups. And we just saw that uh, great accelerators, they have uh, great access to capital and to mentors. And just, just some statistics, almost 100% of the Y Combinator companies got the funding right at the demo day, sometimes before. So for us, it's important to, um, to capitalize on their model. And we are planning to join forces with probably Tim Draper, who has a new accelerator as well himself, and um, run a, a trial program for our startups, because we do believe in this model. Okay, I want to go to the next stage. Post we were discussing the seeds, we were discussing uh, uh, accelerators and, and others. It comes growth now. And we know that we see more and more, and I would say if you look at the statistics, at least in Israel, and I think it's true, and Ruby correct me if I'm wrong, I think it's true in the, in the uh, US as well, the number of small acquisitions have gone down in Israel at least in the last two years. Is that right? It's absolutely right. Okay. I think this number is true in the, in the money tree in the U.S. as well. So we see a desire of small of entrepreneurs and their investors, doesn't matter where they're coming from, to go the, an extra mile, to go a longer way. And I think there is also an agreement, you would agree with me, that in order to go the extra mile, you need money. And it doesn't matter which sector you're in. You know, you can be in semiconductor, which is a, a front-end loaded uh, project. You can be in internet, which is a back-end loaded project. But uh, uh, as I'm sure, Gilad, you would agree with me, if Waze should have gone all the way, you probably need a hundred million dollars or so, or even more to go all the way. So what will be uh, w uh, the next step, the preferred next step? Is it strategic investor? Is it VCs? Or... Is it different from sector to sector? Now, I will start uh, uh, with you, Gilad, because as, as uh, you said, you start from the very beginning, but you also want to go all the way. What would you say is the best way, and is it sector dependent? I, 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 would, I wouldn't say that it's actually a sector dependent. It's more case by case. Uh, and, and again, I think for that later stage that you, uh, companies that you're talking about, or, or that stage that the companies you're talking about, it's more of a strategic uh, investor that they actually should uh, probably get involved with because that, that investor can actually take them to the next level, which is, you know, a sale of the company or actually to become big. Well, would you agree on the importance of strategic investors when you start to grow the company? Because we see today corporate VC came back big time. There's no question about it. If you look at, at uh, you know, they disappeared in 2001, now they came back big time with a lot of money. Would you agree to that? Would you go in into a, a stage which is kind of right after the seed, or you develop your business and then you try to bring them on, or you don't want them at all? Yeah, I would say that go with anyone who can, is willing to give you money and can add you the most value, right? That's the really right way to go. Uh, strategic investors may be the right path, but at a lot of times they, there's also a misalignment in, in interest that come with strategic investors that are really looking for strategic initiatives opposed to the entrepreneurs and the other investors that are on board that really are looking for financial results. Um, there are some corporate ventures, for example, Google Ventures, that are not that only incentivized by financial, uh, they're only financial driven and 
and that's a different story. But for the most part, if you're going for with Samsung Ventures or for any, with any kind of a corporate venture fund, there's a lot of strategic questions that come to mind. And uh, if you can, if you can align expectations and if you can remove all the constraints that come with it, I would say it's a good choice. There's a lot of value that can come with it as well. But uh, in our case, for example, we really try to look at it as a case by case and try to eliminate all the constraints that, that come with it and really align those expectations with the strategic investors.